Welcome to Takahitsu Gaming. This is Takahitsu, and we are back with Battle Brothers. So, we left off. We were about to go over here and drive off the Forgotten. The Brigands at the Forgotten Hut north of Weiss. So, let's get headed on. Alright. Moose Ridge. Alright, interesting. So, that's the territory we're running through. And here we go. So, the battle looks like... That is a very epic looking banner. I don't think I've seen one that looks like that before. We're going to fight against some brigand thugs. This shouldn't be too much of a challenge for our boys. Um, well, we have them outnumbered. And we have the high ground right off the bat. So we have two advantages that they will not be able to counter. So let's look what we got. There's one with a mace, one with a butcher knife. Um, I think he's got a dagger. It's hard to see. This guy's got a lot of armor. He's got a two-handed axe. This guy's got a spear. This guy's got a flail. I want to get rid of this guy first. The two-handed axe. Ooh, that was a huge hit. Reason being, wow. Um, the two-handed axe kind of deals more damage than pretty much all the rest of the weapons that these guys got. And we got that, so... I mean, my two archers just wrecked him. Two of my three archers. That that was pretty badass. Alright, we're going to attack this guy. Wow. Okay, I think these guys seem to be a little bit weaker than I'm expecting. I'm not entirely sure what's going on here. We're destroying them. That much I can say. Um, let's see. I'm actually going to have this guy move here. We're going to begin to flank them. You're going to have to wait. And then... You're going to go all the way this way. Move the archer up. Arrow. Bolt. A whole bunch of missing going on now. That one didn't miss. Mm. Gustav is in danger. Um, let's kill this guy first. Looks like Gustav isn't in that much danger anymore. Okay, so the butcher knife guy is going after someone else. I'm going to have him fortify. This guy's going to try and run away. Yep, that was very, very one-sided. To be honest, that's good. That's what we want. You guys get... You just get stuff that way. Alright, let's see what we got here. So we got a rugged surcoat and a blotched gambeson. So, going through all the loot that you get, like, this guy's got pretty much nothing. He's essentially naked. So, I'm going to go ahead and give him the gambeson. Boom. This guy's got a surcoat. This guy's got nothing. So you just can take that rugged surcoat. So you just work on getting your guys better equipment. They begin to gain more stats, you know. Better equipment, they live longer. Back to Weiss. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
<clears throat> Balan the Guildmaster opens the door to you as you get to his home. He's got a satchel in hand and holds it up. I take it by your return that the brigands are dead. You nod. The man heaves the satchel your way and you tell him you could be lying. Bound the Guildmaster shrugs. Could be, but word travels fast for those who bite the hands that feed. Good work, Sellsword. Unless you're lying, of course. Then I'll come to find you. <laughs> well, they no longer have ambushed trade routes. Um, it's night time, so we have to sit outside and set up camp, which isn't terrible. Okay, daytime. Let's see here. So now that they no longer have ambush trade routes, everything here is cheaper, and we can sell stuff for more. Selling the cloth rolls won't really work. Not a good place for that. Um, we do need tools and supplies. They don't have any. Um, they don't seem to have a whole lot of anything, period. So... I don't need the woodcutter axe. I don't need the dagger. I don't need the buckler. Or these two nothings. So we made a little bit of money. Made a little bit of some. We got a little work. Uh, we got a little bit to work with. On to the next town. Beggar. Farmer. I could get this guy. Let's do it. All right, so get that guy. Um, I need to buy a pitchfork because he's going to be my first spear guy, basically. And the pitchfork is essentially a long-range spear. So there you have it. Now we're going to head up to Sandkai. There's a battle here. Means there might be more brigands and stuff floating around. There's some peasants. And nothing. All right, we're going to make it all the way up here. Let's see here. They've got two contracts. They have a tavern. Let's go ahead and get some booze in my peoples. All right. Um, so I could buy the amber, but right now it's extremely expensive, and that's because they've got those trade routes that are being ganked. Um, I could sell the cloth rolls for some. We could do that, but I'm actually going to wait a minute. And it's because right now everything in here is overpriced, and they're not willing to give me the best deals. So I'm going to actually have to do... I've got two contracts available. That's good. That's good news. Okay, Albrecht the Burge Burgomeister welcomes you and walks you toward Sankai Square. There's a party of peasants milling about, but when they see you coming, they shape up and start talking as they'd been expecting you along. They mostly talk in descriptors, tall as an, any man, armor like you've never seen before, spears as sharp as a peddler's tongue. You hold your hand up and ask why it is they're talking, or what it is they're talking about. Albrecht the Burge Master. These men here say they saw some oddities out in a spot by the name of Adventures End, just northeast of here. Naturally, they weren't out there for no reason. They were looking for something by the name of Coat of Sir Istvan, a relic dear to the town, for through it we may pay, pray for food and shelter. Okay. One of the peasants says, and we was looking for it at his behest. I'll, uh, I'll pick the Burgermeister nods. Of course... And where they failed, perhaps you can succeed. Get this relic for me, and you'll be paid quite well. Um, pay, pay no mind to the fairy tales. Okay. So, this is a, basically this kind of mission. Um, okay, I managed to up, up talk him again. That's good. So, this mission, you're going to head out to some location. You're going to uh, basically... Ooh. Like I said, this stuff's way too expensive right now. I will grab one of these, though. Um, you go out to a spot. Uh, usually, there's monsters in these places. Like, this looks kind of like an undead graveyard. So, I'm going to head up there, and I have to fight whatever's there, obtain this coat of Sir Estevan, and from there we... Well, from there we come back. It's pretty self-explanatory.
so let's see what's here. It, like I said, it literally looks like a graveyard, so it's pretty sure it's a gonna be an undead battle. <clears throat> okay, we don't know. Plain as day, something else in the room that catches your attention. Sitting beside an enormous statue is very unique looking Romphia. Of course, this begs the question, what is it doing here? Oh, you think it's plain as day you should go and grab it. Something tells you might not be the wisest decision. Stick to what it's tasked to. Um, might as well take it. I don't see why. Romphia is a weapon. Oh, do 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 do. And here we go. Ancient auxiliaries. Okay, so the ancient auxiliaries, basically Roman undead troops. Is what they're designed to look like. Undead are kind of difficult to deal with. Archers don't really do any damage to them. So. And they're. They're. they're they really take a lot of damage from stuff like maces and hammers and somewhat axes. But when it comes to swords and everything else, they're kind of a joke. The nice thing about having two spearmen like this, though, is they have this spear wall, which this turn the undead won't even get to us. So we'll end our, we're basically just going to end our first turn and build up on, save up on stamina, because this kind of fight against the undead it becomes a match where you're, you know, who you they don't have stamina to deal with, so. It becomes a gr um, essentially a grudge match. If we can outlast them, last long enough to deal enough damage to kill them, we're good. Otherwise, it's not really going to be a good fight. Alright, so second turn. Instead of advancing, um, I'm going to activate Spear Wall and the Shield. And then everybody on the front line is going to shield. And then literally end their move. gonna keep trying to take out their armor um, with the arrows that's pretty much all the arrows can do is take out their armor wait wait and more pelting thankfully this is early match see how little damage that arrow did that's how the arrows always do this they don't do damage to the undead guys really but a lot of the weapons that they use are that way so you see how he got pushed back when they walk into a spear wall, they get poked. And so it creates a barricade, at least temporarily. Um, have to move, I guess. I thought so. Alright. I guess we're going to start poking away at one of them. Now, if you notice, he attacked two squares away. He's got the two spaces because his uh, spear's a long pole arm base weapon. <clears throat> and his mace is blunt, so it wrecks the undead. And like with um, and these undead, I'm pretty sure they resurrect too, so it's not perma death. I'm not completely positive though. We'll f we'll figure that out. They're, they're low level though, so right now we're not really too hazarded by them. And there's not that many of them either, so we're, we're good at this point. What are they doing? First, to worry about them resurrecting. So that was a fairly easy match. Um, undead matches are not always that easy. They're usually very difficult, actually. But we did just fine, and we got this uh, uh, this Romphia. 
two-handed sword. Okay. Um, might as well. It's worth a lot of money, though. Hmm. Well, we'll see what happens. All right, so the helmets that the undead give you are definitely better than no helmets and most of the beginning helmets. And these shields that they give you, so if you notice, they have 16 um, health, essentially. And then, so they're weaker than the normal wooden shields, but they are the same in terms of damage. So if you're hurting on shields and not getting a lot of them, they're pretty effective. If you notice, the next thing we got is a spear. The spear is also weaker in terms of its own health. 20 to 35 damage as opposed to 25 to 30. So at that point, you really want to know, do you want the uh, higher damage chance or um, the smaller damage ratio? This goes 25 to 30. This is goes 20 to 35. So this is more likely to hit have a higher average damage and that, that's why I'm going to stick with that one and just we'll sell this ancient spear got a bunch of levels so let's see what do we got here um, this guy is one of my frontliners definitely need more resolve I'll give you more of that and we'll go with health as for perks okay so there's several abilities here dodge is pretty good for a lot of them Bullseye is really good for archers. Fortified Mind um, resolve, increases their resolve, hold out. I like Steel Brow. And that's because if you get headshots on guys in this game, at least for my frontliners, they get uh, Steel Brow. But if you get headshots, it does a lot of damage, and there's actually a chance to straight behead somebody. Which doesn't matter what they got, if you get a beheading hit on somebody game over that guy's dead that also works against you though uh, this guy is one of my two-handed guys I like them to have dodge that increases their both melee and um, range defenses so they have a higher chance of dodging all of that which in the long run that immense that helps them out a lot <clears throat> Archer gets bullseye it um what that does is so they have a fall off ratio and at 50 percent range they um normally it makes it that's when the, where their fall off is well this increases that fall off to 75 percent so they get they they shoot further more effectively um i want you to get a little over 60 health Another archer. I don't know why he has a knife. No, no, no. You're equipping that. That's coming over here. I don't need that. So. <clears throat> he doesn't have a huge range skill, so I'm going to go ahead and increase that as well. This guy's injured at the moment. Um, but he'll, he'll heal up. This guy's still newbie status. All right, I'm going to tell my guys to head back over here. Oh, I didn't finish looking through the stash today. Okay. So here we go. Back to the city. So far, this has been a very, very successful mercenary group. A lot of the times this level of success is essentially non-existent um, most time you have a lot of deaths by now <clears throat> one thing you have to know about this game is your guys are going to die eventually you know death always happens in the game so the townsfolk of Sandkai are eagerly waiting my return a shame because you don't have the relic but they, that they so desperately need oh Okay, so I take you don't have the code of Sir Istvan. You try to explain. It's no matter, mercenary. I can't pay you, obviously. And the townsfolk shan't hear of your shortcomings. 
lest we have them lose their minds. They depend upon idols. So, all right. Um, lesson learned. Apparently using, or uh, apparently taking this Romfala instead of the, I guess it was to take this or that and not the other way around. Okay, so we got to kill local brigands. Um, I would say we need to be paid more, but I doubt he's going to do it because we failed the last one. So, if you look over um, in your journal, where is the journal? Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, faction relations. This town, what is this town's name? Sandkai. So if we scroll down to San Kai, they're not happy with us, and that's because we literally failed the mission. Instead, we chose to loot happy stuff. So we need to change that, especially because House Amount is the house that we're trying to be friendly with. At collapsed dwellings of San Kai. Okay. Um, north of Sandkai. Oh wow, that's way up there. Alright, well. Three days, we should be okay to make it all the way up there, but that's a lot. Oh wow, that's a long trek. I mean, I think we'll make it up there and back. And might be about to run out of food. So all this stuff, it affects your movement, um, it affects your vision, um, it makes it a lot harder to fight certain battles in certain territories like this. So I'm actually going to move over here and then camp. The reason for that is when it's nighttime, it's a lot harder for your archers and archers are probably going to be pretty important in this battle. Alright, we're engaging. No idea what's in here, but we do really already know. Alright, so these guys are the higher level brigands. All th all four of them are. That guy right there kind of poses a threat. The rest of them, it's just going to be the standard fight. He's basically the same as this guy, only upgraded. He's got, um, well, it's a two-handed ranged weapon. Good. That means my last archer can shoot him pretty easily. Have you wait for a second. Missed. <clears throat> you get to wait as well. Alright, who's next? Spear guy number one. Pokey. Spear guy number two. One, two, three. Okay, so you're going to actually end up going around like this. And turn. Get to move here. One whack. All right, let's see what they do. Knife guy's trying to poke here. We're gonna move up, shoot, oh, he's got a buckler. Okay, so he's kind of range defended. Ooh, he didn't like that. This guy's gonna break pretty soon. We're gonna focus on this guy first. Down, nice. That's what we want, guys. All right, bring up my big guy. Whack. Ooh, that was a nice hit. Okay. This guy should fall pretty quickly. These two are focusing on him. Because their flanks are folding. Partially because we have them so outnumbered. So 
Swinging that axe is heavy, so it, he does he can't swing it as fast as anybody would like. Ouch! Spearman took a poke. Okay. Um, it's gonna be easier for my archers to actually shoot him than it is him, and that's simply because he's got this tiny little buckler. Can't I move this guy like some of my guys aren't even gonna get to attack this turn. How disappointing. Um, I'm gonna run him down. And um, in the Swamplands, it takes more movement points to move over half this territory. Alright, so we won. Again, no casualties. Awesome. Got some better gear. Sweetness. Alright, let's see where we go from here. And then we're going to march back to the city. Because we want to get paid and make them happier with us. So let's go into the inventory, see what we got. So this guy has no helmet. However, I'm going to give him this open leather cap because in the back line, the helmet isn't as big a deal. We got another shield that we get to use. That's good. Uh, a boar spear. That's way better than the normal spear. So this guy's level two, this guy's level three. He's my veteran spear guy. I'm going to... Where'd the boar spear go? Oh, there it is. I'm going to give it to him. He's earned it. Give this guy the basics. Um, melee defense needs to go up. Your uh, resolve needs to go up. He's actually got a lot of HP. I like my front line usually to have between 60 to 80 HP. Because then they can take a couple hits. And, yeah, so, they need defense, too, though, and offense, and they need damage, so, it, it's all a work in progress. Progress. Alright, so now the question is, do I want to get rid of the pitchfork, which is a pole arm for the, um, yeah, they're both considered pole arms, so, I'm going to do that. Do do. All right, back to moving. We got some supplies from them, which is good. We needed that. And let's see where that gets us with the town. Hopefully, it makes us a lot better off. But, ooh, you see those tracks? That means there's a monster nearby, and... There it is, right there. We're gonna fight him. It's one guy by itself, a Noxzerer thing. They're kinda like ghouls, I guess would be the easiest way to explain it. That is a big one. So these monsters have like six different sizes. That's a pretty big one. And it's not the biggest one, but that's pretty sizable. It's like a small mini boss, basically already feasted so we're waiting actually I'm gonna just end the movement of all these guys archers are gonna open fire and he will move again so here we go he's gonna charge straight at us we can accept that all right you're gonna move to this spot defend this spot. Basically, we're just going to surround him and beat him to death. And 
that's our intended plan for this fight. Um, hopefully it's not as hard as it sounds, but you know, we'll find out. The other thing is bad is when this guy actually knocks somebody out, it does um, has the ability to swallow them whole, which starts doing all kinds of stuff. But this guy's taking a lot of damage fast enough to the point where I don't think we're really going to have to worry about him being able to kill anybody. Okay, apparently he doesn't even have to kill them. He just swallows them anyway. So we, we're timed. The guy that's inside of his stomach has basically got, we got like two turns to get him out. Or he'll die. Which means you got to kill him. And we did that. Very nice. No loot. That's sad. Now, while that seems kind of like a waste because you didn't get any loot, you did get experience. So, and like for example, this guy leveled up. That in itself, to me, is worth it. Ever the downer, Torsten mopes around, wallowing in victory as good as any pissy pessimist could. He throws a dismissive hand out. We have tasted victory, and what of it? Our victory was their defeat, so it very well may be that one day someone else's victory is going to come at our expense. Don't you see? Let us not put the cart in front of the horse, lest the shadows of morrow sneak up upon us while we bask in this supposed glorious night. A few cell swords tell him to stop being such a prick, but his brunt realism tempers the zeal of others. Yeah, the worst part is they're usually right. And then, yeah, it's not always fake either. But we will be fine because you guys are here supporting me. That's all we need. So we gain money. Sweet. Sankai is no longer ambush trades, which means their trade routes are better. And I'm pretty sure that the people here are happier. Um see the prices are down 322 I can work with that Ugh, can't sell this not worth it um, looks like I'm not really gonna be selling or buying a whole lot here the prices just aren't worth it we do need more tools and supplies and medicinal stuff and they have it medicinals worth it tools and supplies really are not um, so I'm gonna buy one piece of medicine and we're gonna take off because this place just really is not worth it. Caravan hand, peddler, fishermen are usually pretty good at a couple things. Um, and a grave digger. Well, we don't really need any of those. Drink a beer, guys. All right, I'm gonna pause it real quick. So we could and we are going to use the boats to sail over to Hotland since we're trying to be friendly with these guys and we want to see how our relations with Sandkai are now because it is important they're cold so they're not as bad it's still not very good though so we're gonna go down to Hotland and that costs money so we're we're starting to get to a point where we're about to get pinching pennies so to fix that, I'm just gonna go over here. Man, I can't sell things here worth worth anything either. All right, let's do this. Uh, da 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 da. See, there's ghosts. So basically, we're gonna go be hunting monsters. Sorry if I'm not reading it. My uh, throat's getting a little dry for it. I'd like to be paid a little bit more. 460. All right, so we're gonna go kill some some monsters that are spooking the locals. And that's that. An improvised burial site. It's down over here. Okay. So that's where we're headed. Looks like we're killing the dead. The undead. Hopefully it's not actual ghosts because they are extremely painful to deal with. crossing this little line island thing here I'm gonna go right here and camp 
Okay, you can get off the beach. Okay, I guess we're not, we're not camping. We'll, we'll be day when we get there now. Alrighty. In we go to arms and we engage. And we're actually fighting brigands, so they must have been wearing ghost masks. I'm just going to push space till they start moving forward. It's easier to shoot people when they get closer to you. The good news is it's starting to finally get up to bigger bigger groups against us. That's both good and bad news. It means we get more experience, but our fights are going to be a little bit bigger. So I'm not too scared of these guys. I mean, they're not really all that big, so. Not really sure who he's shooting at, but he's in range of my archers now, so we're gonna shoot at him. So yeah, my guys are doing really well. I'm actually kind of not used to having this much of an easy run, so it's kind of nice for a change. Uh, oh, I'm like, wait, what? There's another guy alive? This guy is pretty much done for. There is nothing he can do. He can't even run at this point. <clears throat> that one got beheaded. Alright, so we're taking their stuff. Yay, we got more gear. Mostly just going to sell most of it. But the most important point is we just made the town happier with us. Well, when we get back to them, that is. <sighs> Which is good because we're starting to run low on money. So we only got four days worth left. This will increase that a little bit. So I probably won't even spend much of any of it. it. Maybe. It depends on prices. Most likely we're just going to be selling stuff. Hotland, yay. We no longer have the terrified villagers, yay. Alright, so this place is happier with us. Good prices on the amber shards, that's a good thing. Um, not sure why this thing doesn't sell for anything, like, at all. But, we'll, f we'll figure that out. Now, what I could do is I could just buy all three of these ambers, which will put us really low, and then run up to the city next to us and try and sell it. It'd be a risk, but I'm gonna do it. 
Now the reason being is because this is a huge city and that's usually where you want to sell that kind of stuff. And because, you know, that's how you make money. So the third cross chest, oh, orcs, orcs, oh great. So we know what the enemy is on this side of the world. And see, we made money off of it. So it wasn't a lot, but it was still, we made money. And it's worth it. Sell that. Don't really need this spear. Keep the hatchet. Don't need the club. Don't need the bow. Daggers, joke. Don't need the arrows. Don't need that spear. Um, keep that. Let's see what we got. Okay. Ooh, war dogs. Those are good. So we just we did make a little bit of money. Um, we can't do a quest here. Cities are huge. They always have a ton of stuff in there. Um, I'm going to have my guys get a drink. Armor. See how it's red behind it? That's like a legendary piece of gear, basically. And if you notice, it is extremely expensive. 9,000. But it's probably like massive armor. So there's two types of shields when you get down to the end of it. There's kite shields and heater shields. Kite shields are better at stopping arrows, where heater shields are better for melee defense. I usually end up going with heater shields in the long run. It's just my own little thing. Um, what else is weaponsmith here? That's good. That means we get some really good end weapons. Uh, so this is definitely a group that we're going to be... This is definitely a good setup that we got going with this current... Empire, I guess. Sir Wolfgang Ironjaw. So this is one of their nobles, believe it or not. He comes with a massive wage and stuff, though. So they usually have really good gear on them, too. Sometimes it's a lot cheaper to just hire them like that than it is to... Uh... I'm just going to go over here to this forest bird because it's close... We can get a mission there, and then we're going to swing down around this way. No, we're not trying to be friendly with this empire, but it's okay. Oh, we won't even be able to get a mission off them. So instead, we're going to turn and head down Rydberg. So we're just going to pass it up. We're not even going to stop. I didn't realize that. That's a bigger place. Bunch of little groups running around doing stuff here. So we're going to figure out... This is a mercenary company. It looks like they're heading in the same direction we are. They're smaller than we are, though. Whew. So we're heading to Rheinbrook. And our intent there is to work on getting more up. A happier group to work with short okay you see the skulls how this has two skulls it means it's actually a harder mission <clears throat> so we might want to roll with that first yay um, just checking out the local goods falchions are better swords um, hand axe is better than the hatchet Also note that any place that has a weaponsmith will also have more weapons or different weapons in here as well. Um, they also have cheaper tools and supplies. So we can actually have a place that will give us tools and supplies. We have a place over on the other side that will give us medical supplies. So we're looking at a pretty decent setup area. I'm going to buy some grains because we need the food. And we'll buy some bread too. And we're going to start with this. Actually, let's look and see what this is. So he takes stock of the inventory. A well-to-do man spots us and headed away. He announces this is also the employee of Adalbert, the Burgeal Master, an influential person in Ruinbrook that wishes to talk business. So we go, we talk to him. 
dust covers Adalbert the portion of the table, but there's a spot oddly cleaned, cleaner than the rest, and he gestures to it. That's where my crystal skull used to sit. If you couldn't tell, it's gone. You nod, it does appear to be missing. The thieves who took it should be easy to track down. The good thinkers in the night, those brigands, but they make mistakes aplenty during the day. Footprints, crowns also ill-spent, you should be able to track them down pretty easily. He looks at you with a stern eye. Do you understand, mercenary? I want you to get my property back. I want it placed where it belongs, and I want them dead in the mud. All right, so let's talk about pay. 520, a little bit more. Okay, 530. Sweet. We will accept the contract. So we have to follow the footprints. There they are, big footprints. The bigger the footprints, the bigger the group you're chasing is. So this is a group of seven. We already found them. Just click the sword. Your guy's going to automatically intercept and run at them. Bam. And here we go. Brigand thugs. Okay. Pretty sure those are like, it's like the level two brigands. No, that's level one. All right. Let's see what they decide to do for their attack. Now, by pushing spacebar, you put your guys back on the chain. And they stay over there. They don't instantly get back up to the beginning. So, like, next round, my guys will act after theirs, most likely. But that's okay. We will actually... Once they all move, I kind of like... I kind of like to sit there and let the enemy move and then decide how I'm going to react to them. It's not always the best option, though. I would say that about him, but he was just finishing the job, so it wasn't like a sniper shot. This does not like appear to be like it's going to be a very difficult battle, which is good. Um, as I've said before, the less difficult the battles, the more the easier it is to make money and get yourself established, <coughs> which is never a bad thing. is a beheading guys that is a literal beheading that is exactly what happens now you have seen it huh. and another one definitely an interesting battle all right um, I'm gonna move you here pew pew this guy's already trying to run away Yeah, he is so done for. He's at like one hit right now. <laughs> and he tries to run. And he did not make it. Alright, so we did get a, another sword. Or actually, I think that's our first sword. Oop. Pick it up. There we go. I almost left without it. That would have been bad. Alright, time to go get paid, guys. Um, we have armor for Hokon. And we actually have an extra hat now. I don't have any sword guys yet. Okay. That is definitely something that needs to be remedied. We could... We can use this town for a few missions and probably get like two or three more guys. That'll be a good deal. I'm down. Um, 
leveling up. You're an archer. Uh, let's give you archery. I mean, come on now. You're a coward. How sad. Alright. Back to Rheinbrook. This might be our first time we get friendly get with, guys. Yay, money. Alright, so we got that. Let's see what they've got for people. They have a shepherd, gambler, servants, more gamblers, messenger, farmhand, and a thief. Um, well, let's take... What's a messenger do? No, let's... I've never actually seen one of these guys before. I've actually never seen a gambler either. But... Okay, so they've actually got higher resolve. That's good. Why is this guy 280 and that guy's 120? Well, he has like a... Looks kind of like noble clothing, but, um... Alright, I'll take a gambler. I'll take this guy. And before we get take, take off, I want to get them situated. So I actually have now the maximum size of the troop. They have a size, um... Any more we get will actually have reserves, which you can rotate in and out. You can only have 12 active at one point or another. So for now, my gambler, I'm going to give you a shield and either, and you're going to be my cleaver guy. This guy, my runner, is going to be the first sword and shield guy that we get. So after that, what we have is we will need a couple more guys and we're, we'll be set. You can fill up every one of these tents with guys. Or you can have a max of 20, so actually I don't think that's all the tents. You have a maximum population of 20. So, you know, go from there. Uh, let's see here. Don't need the buckler, don't need the hat. Don't need the wooden flail or the stick. And I don't really need these either, but I'm going to keep that for um, let's buy a tool and supply. I mean, we could, we don't need to. So, here we go. Um, this guy. Okay, as you settle in the room, Fritz the counselor finishes a goblet of cobra wine and heaves the cup out of a window. You hear the din of it clatter har hollow, clattering hollow far, far away. He turns to you. While walking the roads, brigands swarmed my wagon and made off of my goods. They left me with my life, which is fine, but the gall of what they did keeps me up at night. I see their sneering faces. Actually, if I'm, um, hear their laughter, I believe it was a message to go after me because I refuse to pay their tolls. So he's paying us a toll to go destroy them. Perfect. We up talked it to 570. Congratulations. Perfect. All right. So they're all the way over here. Ooh. So you get, so at this point, the basics of the game should be pretty easy to understand, and it's mostly going around and killing stuff. But for this battle next time, guys, oh, all right, this is Takahitsu with Takahitsu Gaming. You guys have been fun, and I will talk to you again tomorrow. Have a good evening.